Uh, then he gains attack for every attribute they have, but that doesn't really matter. Because you, you don't attack when you chain material. I've never made him not doing chain material. So yeah, and then uh, I'm just going to go into the combo before oh, okay. we get to the side. Yeah. So all you need is one of those and one of these. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you activate that. This is in play. You activate this. Like, barring any... They can have... 10 bottomless trapples, 10 torrential tributes, 10 compulses, 10 book of moons, like all of that. It doesn't matter. You can keep going. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Like they can have 10 solemn warnings, whatever. They, they can, you can give them any trap cards they want, except stuff that either kills this or negates effects. And you can still keep going. Actually, goes and match. Like goes and match and rivalry. But well, those are different. But actual things that destroy my cards, it, they don't matter. So yeah, so you activate this, activate chain material, then you activate its effect, and then you banish. Uh, those four. So, boom. This guy. So this is gonna be my banished. Here's my deck. You guys see that, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. It's hard to do upside down. Okay, so then his effect activates. Just go back into the deck. And then you remove him again for a second one. His effect activates. You go back into the deck. <laughs> oh my god. And you overlay for two stop max. No. You shoot them for 2,000. And then you remove this from the graveyard. And this from play. And this falls off. For a Gaia. That's why Gaia is important. Oh, okay, okay, that makes and sense. And then you move this and this for either Gaia or Shining. I usually do Shining just because I only have one other Gaia, but I'm pretty sure you can do either, it doesn't matter. And then you remove these four for the third Electrum. And then his effect activates and puts it back all these four and then the original two. Oh my and god. And then, uh, like, oh I can show god. you, and then I'll show you the second time. So now you have a floating Shining. And you basically do it the same way, but you want to make sure you get value out of, like, you don't want to waste your shinings, right? Because otherwise you'd end with the multiplying. So once you have the second one, you go remove again for him, activate his effect, go back, overlay again. You goose off him for the second time. So they have 4,000. And then you remove. Make a guy. Oh my god. Yeah. Remove. <laughs> You can either make Gaia or Shining, it doesn't matter. So now you have two Shinings. Mm -hmm. And whereas the loop would like go like that, well, you just remove both these for a third Shining. Wow. And then you remove those and do that. And then it actually becomes a loop because you get back to the second stage. So you always have the floating shine. So you end up going through them. And then you can do the same thing where it's a Gaia. Like making Gaia and Shining doesn't really matter, but the only reason you want to make Gaia is because of this. And then you have to make Shining when it's two lights. But yeah, that's the basically the loop. And then whatever they do at any point, like Torrential Tribute, Bombless Shuffle, it doesn't matter because if they bombless trouble this, it gets removed and then its effect resolves, so it gets shuffled back. So you just do it. Anyway. <laughs> if they torrential tribute any time, like okay, these die, and then you remove them for a shining, and then you make a third electrum, and then everything goes back. So you just keep going. Just like, keep recycling not, yeah, all day. That's it's it's pretty God. easy to get a hang of, but like sometimes when you're dealing with multiple background and you don't have a lot of fusions left, like it gets a little tricky, but it's usually fairly simple. So yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, it's combo. pretty, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, right. uh, for the side, side deck, deck, we have Come here, a little. <laughs> Just a little bit. I play two Banisher. Uh, Banisher is good. Uh, water. I don't like keeping the combo in against water, so I try to side a bunch of removal, so I can kind of side out of it and side into like a fusion gate hero deck. So Banisher is really important with that. He's just very good against their deck. It doesn't lose to Typhoon or Dust Tornado, and when people don't side Imperial Iron Wall, he's just that good. So. That's important. Maxi. I don't put Maxi in against water, but it's for the decks like Hieratic and Kara Curry and Samurai and things like that, where you want to just... Drawing cards is good, but drawing cards in a combo deck is going to be better. Right. And because you usually keep in the combo against most decks, like Maxi just becomes really important. So yeah, and then uh, three Snowman Eater. Um, the Hero Mirrors and like more slow decks, anti-meta things, Rabbit especially. Like Snowman Eater is really good, it kills Lagia, yeah, that's important. And that's basically it. Like, you keep in the combo, and then you take out card cards, for example, for snowmans. And then you have a way to deal with Lagia, and then a way to just kind of like, instead of drawing cards to get to your combo faster, you have a way to slow them down instead. So it's like changing their pace down versus changing your pace up. And that's good. And you can make zero with it, which is cool. So that's cool. And then uh, Thunder Kings, it's. It's mainly for water, like I'll put in Thunder King and Banisher just to have more monster replacements because I saw the combos so you want to actually be able to kill them. I don't really put any against much else, like unless it's one of the decks I would put in Maxi against. But I don't think I would put any against Wind Up or anything because level limit hurts you really bad. Like if they level limit you, then you can only really kill them with the combo. So your side's a little different for that. The Snowman Eater goes in against Wind Up. Snowman Eater is really good against Wind Ups. I didn't play any though. Um, I said three Typhoon. Uh, it's, again, mostly for water, but if you see like a lot of hate cards and it's not 
the kind of game where you can take out the combo, then you want Typhoon. It's just, it's not the best, like, I wouldn't put it in against Rabbit or something, right? Because all I really want Typhoon is that Phoenix chance, and I don't have to match Rabbit or anything. So, it's just sort of situational, but it's mostly like, you have a 10 card side deck for water. And so, you take out combo pieces and then you put in the 10 card side deck. So, Typhoon's really important because it can hit Imperial Iron Wall and Abyss Sphere. So yeah, and then the last three are just macro. You can combo under macro and Banisher, but like, because they just get removed and Electrum puts them back versus being in the graveyard. So I think the combo actually goes faster under macro, <laughs> just because they get removed when you do things instead of having to remove them for more guys. So yeah, uh, macro is just for the end of the Mermail side deck, and I guess maybe like Harold. <laughs> like I don't yeah, know, yeah. Frog Monarch. There's a Frog Monarch deck doing well. So. Well, that is just awesome, man. This was a deck everyone was talking about, and we just really appreciate the profile. Congrats on another top. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye.